Philippians 3 here has uh, some of the most famous language on having the same mindset as Jesus. And the more you learn about who God is and who Jesus uh, is for us and what we can do in Christ because of the Spirit, uh, the more we understand what he's saying here about rejoicing and whatever we experience. So let's pray. Father, you are the one who is uh, full and glorious and has poured yourself out in order to redeem us. And we understand that your love for us uh, is unbreakable. And yet we are sanctified through experiencing hardship and not depending on our own flesh. Uh, yet you still utilize our prayers and our efforts uh, to, for whatever it is you have planned for us. And so we pray for the power and the knowledge uh, to know you in a deeper way and love you so that we can endure whatever it is that we're called to endure. In Jesus' name, amen. Finally, brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me. It is safe for you. Look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision, who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ, and put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also, I all, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I've suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if anything you think uh, and, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly and, their glory, and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to even to subject all things to himself. Let's begin with what we see about God here. So many amazing things about God. Jesus has been able to subject all things to himself. This is the Lord, the Yahweh uh, the one who is intimate and yet in, in charge of all things. Anyone battling the deity of Jesus would just has to skip this verse uh, here at the end. That all things are subject to him and that he is the Lord uh, and that he is the Messiah and that he is the one who has purchased our citizenship. You can't take away citizenship. It's yours if you're in Christ. And if you're in Christ, you can't be taken out of Christ. Uh, 
And we see here that uh, there's uh, Jesus has enemies. And so we don't need to worry about upsetting people. There's going to be enemies. There's been enemies for thousands of years. Our goal is to have a love for people. And see, he has tears here. That I think about Jesus wanting to gather the chicks of Jerusalem. I think of the same thing here um, that Paul is reflecting to us what it's like to be like Jesus is to love people who are on their way to destruction, um, who are more worried about food and more worried about uh, their own glory and earthly things. Jesus came and put all those things on the back burner. Think about the three sins that uh, Satan tried to have Jesus commit are highly uh, correlated here in verse 19. And so Jesus resisted all those temptations. He faced them. Uh, and so we see this upward call of Christ, this prize. Jesus attained the prize. And he showed us how to go that way. Yes, Jesus is the way. to, And we still have this means that God's given us through prayer and through obedience but yet also his spirit is here to carry us through to the end. Um, and we don't know what those means are going to be. Everybody's is different. The, everybody's obedience is different. What does it look like? Not that they, anybody would do anything unholy, but there are going to be different circumstances that people have to face. You know, people from the past have had to face tuberculosis, gout, uh, murder, you know, martyrdom. And we face social unrest and cancel culture and things like that. Don't worry about that. that that's God's means to get you to where he's taking you. There's hope there because the prize is there. We just, we have to go through it. It wasn't you're saved and I snap you out. No, I'm going to grow you and change you. So God is working. And all of that is... Uh, what causes him to rejoice. Even though there's people that are against him, people that want to kill him, eventually kill him. Just like Jesus. Jesus said there was joy in obe obeying the Father. So what are some things for us to imply from that? This is more of a commentary on, on Jews who were opposed to the gospel, especially in Thessalonica. It wasn't a big church a big Jewish synagogue in Philippi at the time. That's why they were kind of in this small group where Lydia, that you read about in Acts. And so, uh, but there's a lot of people around that are opposed to the gospel. Probably one of the things that was threatening Epaphroditus uh, that we read about in the previous chapter. But these things here, I think, are really still pertinent for today. Is uh, the flesh here is your race, your ethnicity, your, uh, and I, when I say race, I mean by, you know, your genetic origin. Obviously, we're all one race, which is kind of ironic that we use that word, but it's, it's, a, it's you know, anyway. Uh, where you go to church, how you grew up, none of those things matter. Who your parents were, who your teacher was, who your pastor was. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change. It's about who you are in Christ. And you count all that as loss. Um, and the goal is to know this Jesus that we keep asking about. That's why everything is about do, where do you grow in knowing who God is. The Bible is not primarily about you figuring out how to apply it. Um, isn't a history book to understand history necessarily. It's not a math book. It is a book that teaches you who God is and how he thinks. And if you're not going to the Bible and asking that, you're putting confidence into your own flesh. That's what I see here. Is uh, Our whole goal is to know Christ. That means when we're obeying, we learn more about him. We know more about how to obey by what we read and seeing the way Jesus thinks, the way God thinks. He does think. He does feel. Um, and he does it perfectly. And I want to be as close to that as possible. But we know that we haven't obtained it, that we're not perfect. Anybody who says you've got to be perfect to get to heaven is not telling you the gospel. They're telling you we're aiming for perfection. We're being sanctified. 
And the more we're sanctified, the more we know him. And what's the point? Is because Jesus Christ has made you his. It's not that he made you his and then we're going to see if he's going to, he's going to, see if he's going to keep you. It's not, it's, you're not on a trial basis here. Anybody who teaches you a gospel that says you are on a trial basis gives you zero hope. Zero hope. Your hope is that you are his and that he will make sure you make it. Your new citizenship is with him. That is why you can rejoice in anything. And if you're struggling with that, please ask him for help. I can't change your mind. It's a spiritual reality to see that truth here that you are his, not you might be his. Now, see, we see this word this here that uh, I may attain. This isn't like a chance. This is I will attain this resurrection from the dead. Uh, but it's this means is what I have to go through that God has planned to build me up, that mystery, that God knows it, he's accomplishing it, he's doing it, he's sealed it, it's all done, but we still experience life, we still experience struggle, and the amount, and what with the positions we're put in, our faith is either lowered or strengthened, uh, and we just continually are shown what we need, but we're sustained by Jesus, because he has made us his own, and for that we can always rejoice.